Treasures. Every adventure game has to have treasures. I'm Hugh and this is a lesson in my adventure game programming course. And today I'm going to show you how to add treasures to your game. Now, if you've watched the previous lessons, you already know how to build a world of linked locations or rooms and let the player move from one room to another. If you haven't followed along, click the playlist link that's shown down below and go back to watch the other lessons before watching this one. Treasures are any objects in the game that the player can take or drop. Later on, we'll also find out how to let the player do other things with treasures. Put treasures into containers, for example, or, or push them and pull them. But really, the essential feature of a treasure is the, that it can be taken or dropped. It can be collected and then dropped in some other room. So in programming terms, what does that really mean? Well, if a treasure is in a room, it has to be inside or referenced by a room object. If it's been taken from a room, then it has to be in the possession of or referenced by the player object. But wait a minute, there isn't going to be precisely one treasure in every room. There could be none at all, or there could be a hundred. And the same goes for the player's possessions. So what we need are lists that are able to contain zero or more treasures. Each room will have a list, and the player will have a list too. So before we even start to think about how to take and drop treasures, we need to figure out how to create treasure objects and how to make lists of those objects. So let's think what sort of object a treasure should be. At its simplest, a treasure is just some sort of thing. It could be anything, a coin, a jewel, a magic wand, any kind of thing that can be taken and dropped. To create a treasure object, we could use the thing class. That's the most basic class in my game, as I've shown in earlier lessons. A thing object just has a name and a description. Or we could create a special treasure class. And that's what I've done in this Java game. Here the treasure class is a descendant of the thing class. It inherits the name and the description from thing, and now it can add on any special features of a treasure, such as, well, its value. For now, in my C-sharp game, I won't bother creating a new treasure class. I stick with the basic thing class. Later on, I may want all kinds of thing objects, anything from a diamond ring to a tree or a door. Some of those things will be treasures, others maybe just part of the landscape. I've renamed the previous thing class to basic thing. I've created a new thing class, which inherits name and description from basic thing, and adds on this one extra feature can take, which, as you may guess, determines whether or not the thing can be taken. The player may try to take just about anything, but I want to make sure that some things can't be taken. It would be silly, for example, if the player were able to take trees or doors or other big and immovable objects. I've given the thing class two constructors. In this one, only the name and the description of each thing object are passed as arguments, and can take is always set to be true. That's because I think most of the things in the game will be takeable. The second constructor takes a third argument, so that I can set can take either to true or to false. And now I'm ready to add lists of thing objects to rooms, and also to the player. The rooms are created from, that is, they are instances of, the room class. The player is an instance of the actor class. I could add a list of things, and any methods needed to handle that list, to each of those two classes, both room and actor, independently. But that would mean I'd be coding everything twice. Well, it'd be much better to add all the list management code to a single ancestor class, of both room and actor. In the previous version of my game, room and actor descended directly from thing. But thing has no list management capability, so I need to create a class that descends from thing and then adds on some list management. And that's what I've done here. The new thing holder class maintains a list of things. 
It can add one or more things to its list using the add thing or add things methods. And it has a property called things which returns the list. Thing holder is a descendant of thing. In order to add the features of the thing holder class to both the actor and the room, all I need to do is to redefine the ancestors of those classes. Previously, both room and actor descended directly from thing. Now I make them descend from thing holder. They still ultimately descend from thing because the thing holder class itself descends from thing. But their immediate ancestor is now thing holder. So they inherit that class's thing list. I've also changed the room and actor constructors to accept a new argument, a thing list object. So what exactly is a thing list? As its name suggests, it's a list of thing objects. I could have created a list using a plain array or a dictionary. But since I want this list to work exclusively with objects created from my thing class, it seems reasonable to create a special class to deal with that sort of list. I have more to say on the thing list class in the next lesson. In the meantime, why not see if you can program your own list management class to be used by the thing holder class. As always, there are many ways of dealing with these kinds of programming problems. My code will give you just one possible solution, but there are of course others. We've already looked at arrays and dictionaries in earlier lessons in this course. We've even subclassed a dictionary to create a room list class. You could use a simple array or dictionary or some other type of list to hold thing objects, or you could subclass a dictionary or a list. Give it a go. See how far you get before I show you my solution. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, click the like icon. And to get notifications whenever I upload new lessons, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon.